Hey, in this video we are going to discover another steering behavior which is seek. By the way, if you don't know what is a steering behavior, make sure to watch this video. I'll leave you the link to it in the description below. The idea behind the seek behavior is to simply make an entity follow the location of a given target. So as you can see here, we have a very basic setup composed of a vehicle entity set as a cone mesh and that is created using these few lines of code which I've explained in details in the other video. So again, I highly suggest you watch it before you continue with this one. That said, the first thing we are going to do is create the mesh of the target we want the vehicle to follow, and that's by creating a simple sphere. Next, we'll transform that dead body into an intelligent entity by creating an instance of the game entity class and then merge it with the mesh by calling set render component in the sync function which is already used here to fusion the vehicle instance with the cone. The next thing we need to do is to add the entity to the entity manager. Now it's time to inject the seek behavior into the vehicle and that's by creating an instance of the seek behavior class. The argument of the constructor must be the position that we want the vehicle to seek. We can use a vector3 instance, but in our case we want the vehicle to follow the sphere, so we'll set the sphere's position as the argument. Then we'll just add that behavior to the steering property of the vehicle. As you can see, both entities' initial positions are the same, so we can't clearly see the result. So what we are going to do is to simply reposition one or both of them. To do that, we'll call the position set method from the vehicle instance. And there we go. As I said, the vehicle will always try to catch the sphere. That said, let's make the sphere change its position every one or two seconds. To do that, we are simply going to use the setInterval method and will generate some random coordinates and use them to reposition the target. And now since we are applying some geometric transformation to the entity, we'll need to set the matrix auto-update of the mesh to false which if you remember prevents 3GS from doing any matrix calculations to rotate or translate the mesh because that will be handled by Yuka. And this is it for this video, so make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.